Now here's an interesting fight coming up between a couple of fighters. Mike who are, Siepert. Who are veterans to the game. Yeah, Tyree he, Johnson and Mike Siebert. Yeah, six and 10 versus five and six. So both these guys have a losing record and they are looking to get back on the winning track. Mike Siebert said it best, John. And this takes us back to the UFC single digits striker versus wrestler classic. Let's get it back up to the man in the middle of the cage, Jake Digman, to bring out our first fighter. The following contest is in the RFO Light Heavyweight Division, and it is brought to you by Shane's Flea Market. Introducing first, making his way down the aisle into the blue corner, please welcome Bulldog Mike Siebert. And John, Mike Siebert with the nickname Bulldog. You mentioned five and six. Talk about what Siebert brings to the table. Siebert's coming off a loss against Joe Wheeler at Cage Madness, but he does have a track record here at Big Guns. Uh, Big Guns 23 back in March of 2017. He did get a win over Matt Matlock. Um, very impressive win. Um, TKO referee stoppage from strikes at two minutes and 57 seconds in the very first round. This guy just, he's, we, we talked to him backstage. He just wants to fight. Well, he thinks it's striker versus wrestler. He says he's the striker, except he started his career as a wrestler, then he turned into a striker. And, and you mentioned he wants to fight. We talked to him about how the fight's gonna go. He said, I'm gonna beat the hell out of him. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got absolutely no shame. He's like, I'm here to fight. That's what I wanna do. And he wants to bring it. Siebert predicts a KO in the first, and he said if it's not a KO, it's gonna be a submission in the first, but he doesn't see it going past that round. And we'll see, because his opponent may very well say the same thing. It's gonna end in the first round. And the two last fights he had, first of all, you mentioned Joe Wheeler, beat him by submission. Joe Wheeler is one of the top up-and-comers. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a real good fighter, five and two. So he lost in the first round to Joe Wheeler. Prior to that, Siebert wins in the first round. So he, Siebert predicts he's gonna fin continue one round fights, this time coming out ahead. Yeah, bo both of these guys come in here with a lot of experience and we're gonna see which one prevails. Jake, bring out our next fighter, please. And his opponent making his way down the aisle into the red corner. Please welcome Tyree TNT Johnson. You mentioned the experience, but before we do that, John, let's break down the tail of the tape between these two fighters. Yeah, 28 versus 30 years old. They're basically the same. 5'7 versus 5'9, about equal. But the one thing, even though both of these guys have losing records, the one thing that I really like about them is they say, you know what, I want to get the experience. And my coach, Jason Dent, Jason Dynamite Dent, always said, amateurs is about the experience, professionals is about your record. And both of these guys are saying, you know what, I don't care what my record is as an amateur, I need the experience. So both of these guys are in here tonight trying to get more experience, and, and I, I applaud him for it. Tyree Johnson used to fight at heavyweight. This is his third fight at 205. Johnny started at 257, dropped down, and he said he's lost some of that brute force, but the technique came with him. The technique came down to light heavyweight. And yeah, what's really interesting with him is, you know, you figure a guy that big, um, he, a lot of his fights have ended by submission or he's won by submission. You'd think it would be a TKO, but this guy's not so bad on the ground. Yeah. Uh, let's get the, fighters. the following contest is in the RFO Light Heavyweight Division, and it is brought to you by Shane's Flea Market. 
Introducing first in the blue corner, he fights out of Newcomerstown, Ohio. He weighed in at 199 pounds, representing the doghouse. He has an MMA record, five wins, six losses. Please welcome Bulldog Mike Siebert. His opponent in the red corner, he fights out of Cleveland, Ohio. He weighed in at 204 and one half pounds, representing hooligans, boxing, and MMA. He has an MMA record, six wins, 10 losses. Please welcome Tyree TNT Johnson. This bout is scheduled for three three-minute rounds. And when the action begins, your referee is Mr. Jerry Poe. Tyree Johnson in the black shorts. Mike Bulldog Seifert and the, there's nothing else to call it other than hot pink. Jerry Poe, Ryan Cavanaugh, John Sturmack calling the action. These two guys know each other. Tyree Johnson said, I think I've actually cornered him before. Well, there's no question that Mike Seifert, he has come out here and said, I want to bang. So we will see if how long that lasts. Overhand right by Seifert. And so far, so good. He wants to bang, and he's throwing. Right hand lands for TNT Johnson. Johnson comes out in southpaw, which I think all southpaw should be. Ooh, left hand by Tyree Johnson, and Siebert gave him a grin. You know what that means. Yeah, that means you're hurt. Exactly. We didn't even plan that. So we'll see what happens here. John, I think right now Tyree Johnson's winning the stand-up. It's through the first minute, but I think he's winning the stand-up, and Siebert thought that's where his edge would lay. Both these guys seem very, very willing to stand and bang. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if somebody gets clipped and if they get panicked and want to take it to the ground. Who knows? And you can tell when you see when you get two fighters in there with double digit fights, you know, there, there's that patience, there's the confidence. And, uh, you know, calm under fire, John. Yeah, and, and neither one of these guys are, are gonna be rattled by anything. But we'll see what happens and who, who goes for a takedown first. John, Mike Sieper just threw a fastball and Tyree Johnson avoided it with the head movement, ducked under and got the clinch. But uh, that was that was Siebert's fight ender right there. Right now, Siebert's doing a good job preventing the takedown. John, you mentioned earlier on the ground, guy on top usually has the edge in the judge's eyes. How about up against the cage? Up against the cage, you know, one of the things they, they look at is who's more aggressive. And Siebert caught Tyree Johnson on that exchange. Good inside leg kick from Siebert. You know, that's, that's a technique you don't see a whole lot at the amateur level. Yeah, you don't see it a lot at the amateur level, but again, you've got double digit fighters. These guys, they know what they're doing. And another one, but I think that was more foot on shin bone, and that might have hurt Siebert as much as Johnson. Uh, but it certainly hurt Johnson enough to enter in for a takedown. And he gets it. Ten seconds, you know, you have a pretty close fight. Last ten seconds in the judges' scorecards, you know, in the judges' minds, could that be the deciding factor in the round? Well, I believe that takedown was impactful too. I mean, you know, for the stand-up being fairly, fairly even, uh, the takedown by Johnson probably won him that round. Yeah. And one of our round card girls is letting us know it is round number two here at RFO Big Guns 25. Can you believe it? 25. It's impressive as we take a look at this, the action here. This is uh, what I think is the takedown that won the round, John. Yeah, and he just, just blatantly shot in. Just went, you know, literally balls to the walls, just went nuts and just said, all right, I'm. I, I don't even need to shoot. I don't need technique. I'm just going right in, and I'm gonna try to get this guy to the ground. And he did. So much to his credit, he got it done. And John, what I think is interesting about that, 
is he said that brute force at heavyweight was left at heavyweight. I'm not so sure, Tyree. That was some brute force on that takedown, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, T Tyree is just, you know, I think on the feet it was pretty even, but that last 20 seconds, I think that's gonna push the round one to Tyree's favorite. I'd have to agree with you. Jerry Poe brings the fighters out for the second round. Three scheduled, light heavyweight action in the RFO cage. Mike Siebert, hot pink. Tyree Johnson in the black. And Tyree Johnson, mostly this has been a stand-up fight until the veteran Tyree Johnson said, I'm gonna win this round. Now that's a third inside leg third, kick. Third inside, I was, gonna, I was just gonna say that. Great minds think alike, partner. Oh, what a takedown by oh, Tyree. Oh, great takedown defense and Good Does that knee, count good as knee to the body. Oh, he tries for a suicide, but it's not going to work. Uh-oh, Tyree's got hooks in, looking for a rear naked choke. Ooh, Sieber with a right hand. Good scramble there. Uh-oh. As you pointed out, Tyree Johnson has some submissions to his record, so he's no stranger on the mats. Look at those active hips. He looked for the arm bar and he's gonna use it to transition and try and switch positions, but the cage got in the way. Yeah, but he's, he's had many, both wins and losses by submission. Um, it is absolutely ph phenomenal, but one of the things that he's gotta really watch out for is the submissions by choke, both guillotine and rear naked choke. He has lost in each, each way. And so, a number of times, John. And I think he's probably learned his lesson. He's going to keep going. we got about a minute and a half left. So right now, Siebert's on top of the hot pink. And he's just raining down blows. Doing a good job nullifying the guard of his opponent. John, do you think it's easier for judges to get it right in amateur fights because the rounds are shorter? Um... Ugh, boy, you're putting me really on the spot. Um, I, I think they tend to go for who's on top versus who's being more active. I've only seen one fight where a guy won a fight from the bottom. Um, but if you go to a jiu-jitsu school, man, being on the bottom, man, you're in your, that's, you're, you're in heaven. So we'll see. Now he's looking to grab a leg and go for an arm bar. Where I think Johnson kind of stole round one. I think uh, Siebert's got round two. Um, unless we have something crazy happen here, I think we have this one to one. So what do you think? Siebert ends up on top. I think it is. I'd have to agree with you. Mike Siebert, who looks pretty tired right here. Mike Siebert, you know, he definitely controlled that round, was on top most of the time. And, you know, he's wrong in his prognostication. This fight did not end in the first round, and perhaps he was hoping for that and was unable to. So, John, let's take... A look at some of the action from the second round. And here, here's the a takedown attempt. Good knee, but it does not. Good knee by Cypher, but what happens is as they get to the ground, you're going to find Seifert on top. Good reversal right there. And I think you're right, Seifert is absolutely exhausted. Yeah, Tyree Johnson looks to be the fresher fighter, John. And you see the Hooligan shirt, Tyree Johnson now working at Hooligans Boxing and MMA in North Ridgeville, Ohio. John, as a, as a former heavyweight fighter, not you of course, but Tyree Johnson who we're looking at, moving down to light heavyweight, does that help him as we get deeper into the rounds because he's used to carrying more weight? We're gonna see. 
There you go. Jerry Poe brings the fighters together. Third and final round, light heavyweight action. Two Great grizzled sports. veterans of the amateur ranks. It's Tyree Johnson, Mike Sieber. Go ahead, John. Yeah, great sportsmanship. Both fighters touch gloves. Johnson comes out, southpaw, as he's done the entire fight. Sticks a jab in the beard of Siebert. And there's a straight left and a two-piece. Oh, and Johnson elects to clinch with him. It we'll almost like it's... he pulled guard. Well, and for that reason, again, I, you know, John, I, I feel like in these fights, when you get into the third round, when you know one guy's tired and you hurt him, perhaps it's better to step back instead of always engaging because you lose that range and that ability to really land some strikes. As a more tired fighter, this is a safer place for Siebert. Yeah, and right now Siebert is, you can see his forehead, his nose, he is battered and beaten. So he's taken some shots. Johnson certainly hasn't given him a whole lot of space. As I take a look around at this packed crowd at Fairhaven Hall, the RFO is putting on another outstanding show. Tyree Johnson now, as we near the midpoint of the final round, Tyree Johnson. One minute, 30 seconds left to go. It would not surprise me if Jerry Poe stands them up, but he's backing off. I but think it, Tyree Johnson's given him plenty of reasons not to. I mean, he's going body, head, landing some strikes with some significance behind them. Jerry Poe on one knee. His corner keeps screaming body, body, head, but I gotta believe that Jerry Poe is just gonna say, this is just too boring. You think so, you really think. I mean, Johnson hasn't stopped moving, See, and he steps over, so well, he's advanced his position. Well, as long as he's advancing his position, that's, keep going. Tyree Johnson's got 50 seconds to get Seabird out of there. Can Siebert survive and make it to the cards of what has been a very close fight? Tyree Johnson moves up the ladder to side control. And now Tyree Johnson is just really, and now he's got back control. He's got both hooks in. And again, he takes one out perhaps to maintain this position. He Siebert's keep, exhausted. Yeah, he keeps softening up his opponent. I'd really like to see him go for a rear naked choke right now. We hear the bell for the final 10 seconds. Tyree Johnson, let's see if he empties the gas tank and tries to put an exclamation point on what is surely around the judges will score in favor of him. And you can tell Seabird is just absolutely exhausted. But he's game. Struggled through that third round, but he made it. And these two guys, as, I, as we mentioned earlier, John, they're friendly. Seabird seems to be favoring that right arm, and Tyree Johnson checks on him. And what a great show of sportsmanship. Both of these guys. And yeah, there's a lot of red marks on the back and the arm of Mike Seabird. We got Tyree Johnson. Oh, Justin Doan. There's nobody that appreciates uh, good breakdancing more than our cameraman, Justin Doan, who is, that's his camera shot right there, taking a look at Tyree Johnson. And look at the handiwork. Justin Doan's probably asking, come on, man, let's see it again. Beautiful work inside the cage by the one and only Justin Doan. And how about the work here we're gonna see from Tyree Johnson? Oh yeah, he came out in the third round and just laid it on his opponent. He was very, very, very fast. He uh, was aggressive, and I think he recognized that his opponent was exhausted. Jake Digman is walking into the cage, the dapper Jake Digman, I may add, and he's got the official scorecards. Uh, let's find out who won this tough battle between grizzled veterans in the light heavyweight amateur division. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for both of these fighters. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards where we have a split decision. Judge Will Messer scores about 29-28, Siebert. Judge Dan Leeson scores about 29-28, Johnson. 
And Judge Mike Berry scores this contest 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Tyree TNT Johnson! Big win for Tyree Johnson, How and Matt Chalkovich is going to talk with him. I'm <laughs> Here with your winner, Tyree Johnson. You fought for RFO a lot. Every time you come out here, you get better and more athletic. How does it feel to get what he almost had? You're almost to 20 fights now, man. Feels good. Uh, tiring. A lot of fights. I'm trying to even out this record so I can start getting paid. So three more to go, baby. I hear you, man. What If you do go pro, what's the weight class you're looking to go at? 70, 170, 80, 85 maybe. Let's hear it one more time for your winner, Tyree Johnson.